What determines your future success? Is it hard work? Is it the color of your skin? Or is it something completely outside of your control? I want to share an idea with you that if we want to change the world, we have to invest in other people. People may say, as an adult, I've wiped out my disadvantage. And maybe that is true. But when you are the only black person in your village, workplace, or at social gatherings, it's impossible not to feel the inequality in society. Although I have great people around me, psychologically, I can't help but wonder, what do they think of me? When I go to a job interview and I'm the only person of color, I can't help but wonder, do they see my color? When I go into a store and the security guard follows me around the aisles, I can't help but wonder, what is he thinking of me? As a black man living in semi-rural Hampshire over the last 12 years, it has become evident that my neighbors, work colleagues, and friends know very little about the experience of a black African living in the UK. Over the last few months, I've been surprised of the amount of discussions in social media that I've got into where I'm explaining the prevalence of racism in UK society, or when I'm using the phrase Black Lives Matter is not to say that there is less importance in anyone else's life. I want to share some of my story with you. Rather than focus on my successes, I want to focus on how inequality in society affects people like me. Emotionally, socially and psychologically. And I want to tell you what made the difference. First of all, I want to qualify my origin as sometimes the categories that ethnic minorities get put into can sometimes be quite general and often unhelpful. Titles like BAME, Afro-Caribbean or African-American etc. are quite broad and sometimes create a sort of racial class system. Whilst these descriptions are good for educational study, they can sometimes categorize us and tell us who to marry, where we should live, what jobs we should go for, or who our friends should be. In my experience, these descriptions strengthen stereotypes and put a subconscious expectation upon me. An example of this was when I was at secondary school. My school was 75% black Afro-Caribbean and there was definitely an expectation that the pupils excelled at sport, but less expectation of academic excellence. I was born of Ghanaian parents who moved to the UK in the 1960s. My maternal grandfather was a wealthy timber merchant who sold to British companies during colonialism. Once Ghana became independent in 1957, these types of trade deals ended, which hit my mother's family hard financially. As a way to offset this difficulty, my parents came to London to study. My father studied law and my mother dressmaking. Their intention was to gain qualifications and return. My mum recalls the difficulties of the 1960s of seeing rental ads posted in windows saying no blacks, dogs or Irish. She also pointed out the terrible irony of coming from a wealthy background with all the freedom that brings and yet being told your skin colour limits your housing. I was born and grew up in Lambeth, South London within the backdrop of racial tension between the community and police. Riots in Brixton gained national attention in 1981 and 1985. However, this type of community unrest was not unusual, as the heavy-handed policing towards the black community combined with high level of youth unemployment and poverty, creating a feeling of being born into a prison with no chance of release. The lawlessness of the community affected me personally as my father was brutally murdered in a mugging when he tried to intervene with a lady who was being robbed of her jewellery. I was eight years old at the time. I think it's evident that my childhood had very little aspiration. We were a fearful family living under the scrutiny of an institutionally racist police force. Those are not my words, those are the words of Sir William McPherson in his 1999 report inquiry 
to the Stephen Lawrence murder. As I reached my teenage years, being stopped and detained by the police became an almost weekly event. I recall being stopped by the police and questioned, saying I fitted the description of someone who committed some crime, but I could actually see the subtext, that to be black was to be a criminal. In this talk, I've mentioned three aspirations or expectations that were put towards me as a teenager. One, I'm only good at sport. Two, I'm a criminal. Or three, I was both. I cannot explain to you the impact authority figures have in a community, implicitly and sometimes explicitly in giving these messages to young black people. You are told your skin color is limiting. Added to that, many of these authority figures are white and whether true or not, the black youth feel that this is representative of all white people. This leads to social and psychological barriers that many black people live with today. My moment of change was when I joined my local community basketball club. This was run by a man named Jimmy Rogers. This man's contribution to the South London community cannot be measured. His investment in me changed my world. The direction and focus of learning and playing basketball with Jimmy's input saved my life and enabled me to see other parts of the world beyond Lambeth, London and even the UK. My horizons were broadened by traveling to other parts of the UK. I benefited from the confidence this gave me. But I also became aware that I was part of an ethnic minority and there were people that lived in communities far away from mine that lived in places I could only dream of. It also became evident that very few people had ever met a person who looked like me. My story is one of growing up at a disadvantage compared to others. I had four brothers and we grew up in a council high rise flat with my mum, a single parent. We received free school meals and my mum worked two jobs. The harsh reality is my story is not an unusual one for a black person growing up in the UK. I could name many friends that have had it much worse than me. Murdered, lost to drugs, imprisoned, I could go on. I could give a true story for each one of these situations. Added to that, many black people are dealing with the legacy of colonialism, which creates a feeling of inferiority and therefore limiting behaviours. And this is not only a historic situation, but this is still true today. This has got to change. I have been blessed in my life to play the sport I love as a professional. In spite of my extremely difficult upbringing, my background has inspired me to help young people in any way I can to overcome the barriers that could stop them achieving their dreams. As a teacher and a coach, I can invest in others. So back to you, what can you do to change the world? Invest in others, listen, learn, be an ally. Being sincere about equality requires a proactive attitude that encourages inclusion for all. This begins in social settings. If you have a classmate, work colleague, neighbour who is of ethnic origin and maybe a bit standoffish or keep themselves to themselves, invite them to any social opportunity and keep inviting them even if they continually say no. The invite is part of the inclusion. It must be remembered that ethnic minorities have a 400 year history of being marginalised, separated and excluded. This becomes part of our psyche and we need persistent gestures to break this down. Don't be afraid, talk about racism and how it impacts us. Even if we have to set you straight on a few things, it generally won't offend. Don't pretend you cannot see I am black. My black skin is part of my identity of which I am immensely proud. So only identifying me by my height or by the color of my tie 
feels a bit silly and could be offensive. What we don't want is the color of our skin to define our character or our abilities. Challenge racism when you witness it. To be silent is to be complicit. Accept that ethnic minorities have certain challenges that affect us over our lifetime. This in no way is trying to minimize the struggles other people may be having. But the black experience has many specific historical, social and emotional issues that affect us all today. To tackle racism, it is not enough just to say, I am not racist. To tackle racism, we have to be proactively anti-racist. You can change the world by investing in others, not just by being nice, but getting involved and giving of yourself. I think this is an idea worth sharing.